All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. We're sitting in the uh, KB32 studios. And right here in my hand is the big topic of the last couple of days. Uh, we're talking about HR8 and an HR1446. I'm going to talk about them individually. I'm going to give you some of my input on what I think can or could not happen. So what I want you to do, uh, put hashtag uh, shall not in French because I think that a lot of these guys have completely forgotten about the shall not in French part of this Constitution or a Bill of Rights when they introduce crap like this. Now let's talk about this. H.R. 8, uh, this is the first one we're going to talk about. A Bipartisan Background Checks Act by a guy named Mike Thompson out of California. And of course, he is a Democrat. Well, I went and took the liberty of just highlighting a few things that really jumped out at me. And basically what it is, is uh, you're talking about it required a background check for every firearm sales. sale. That means uh, that you can't roll out here to Walmart, go to the parking lot, and sell a firearm to any one person. Uh, and it also means that you can't go out and sell, uh, say, a firearm to one of your good friends. That's it, without them going through an FFL. But here's the part. It shall, not, it shall be unlawful for any person who is not licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, or licensed dealer to transfer a firearm to any other person who is not so licensed unless the licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, or licensed dealer has taken possession of the firearm for the purpose of complying with subsection S. Now, here's the thing. Uh, HR 8 was easy to read. HR 1446 by James Clyburn, that shit was all over the place. And the only thing that I can tell from that one is that, well, you know, they just want to be able to dictate why, how, what you can and cannot have, when you can have it, and how long it's going to take. And, well, it's up to them to figure it out. If you haven't lost it yet, here we go. Uh, HR 8, paragraph uh, 1, shall not apply to. Now, here's the... If anybody thinks that this stuff is bipartisan, it's not bipartisan. Shall not infringe means shall not infringe. But I'm going to read you the one part of this law that if it does come into effect or they sign it into law, which is the part that really is uh, unusual or not unusual as far as the Democrats are concerned. I mean, Hillary Clinton even said it a while back. Every bill of right is subject to reasonable legislation. And that's the whole thing. Everybody goes, well, this is reasonable. And that's my fear is that you're going to have some rhinos, okay, uh, Republicans, who should fight for our Constitution and our Second Amendment and our Bill of Rights. They're going to go, well, that sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Just like they did in California, because I think in California you have to go through an FFL no matter what. And so anyway, uh, paragraph one, shall not apply to, and the paragraph one was the one about you can't sell it unless it goes through an FFL. A law enforcement, law enforcement agency or any law enforcement officer, armed private security professional or member of the armed forces to the extent the officer, and what they do is they put that disclaimer in there so that it covers all the law enforcement agencies, all the, all the uh, alphabet boys, all the army, the military, whatever, that they don't have to go through uh, a LF, uh, FFL to purchase their firearms for the agency. Okay, but what it does say is a transfer that is a loan or bona fide gift between spouses, between domestic partners, between parents and their children, including step parents and their stepchildren, between siblings, between aunts and or uncles, their nieces or nephews, or between grandparents and their grandchildren. If in the transfer has no reason to believe that the transferee will use or intends to use the firearm in a crime or is prohibited from possessing firearms under the state or federal law. Now, a gentleman called or sent me an email yesterday, and I'm going to reach out to some individuals because in North Carolina, we have our concealed carry permit. And with that, I don't have to go through a NICS. They fill out a 4473, hand me the gun, we're done. So I'm not sure if that reflects on us as uh, CCW holders in North Carolina. Also, it goes on to say, a transfer to an executor, administrator, trustee, or a personal representative of an estate or trust that occurs by operation of law upon death of another person. A temporary transfer that is necessary to prevent imminent death, blah, 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 it's a red flag. A transfer that is approved by the Attorney General. Uh, a temporary transfer if the transferor has no reason to believe that the transferee we use or intends to use the firearm in a crime or prohibited from possessing a firearm under state or federal law. 
uh, and the transfer takes place and the transferee's possession of the firearm is exclusive. Okay, so we're getting into some weird little semantics. Uh, or, or, okay, so while they do that, you have to be at a shooting range or at a shooting gallery. While reasonably necessary for the purpose of hunting, trapping, or fishing, if the transferor has no reason to believe or the transferee intends to use the firearm in a place where it is illegal and has reason to believe that the transferee will comply with all licensing permit requirements, such as hunting, trapping, or fishing, while in the presence of the transferor. Remember in the past, they were saying you couldn't even let somebody borrow your firearm even if you were there. So this is the scary part. What I'm talking about with HR 8 is that these individuals, well, they could read that and go, well, that's reasonable. And the term shall not fringe went right out the window. Okay, so let's talk about this, HR 146. Now this thing right here is terribly confusing and it's, it's crazy. And it says, uh, it's by James Clyburn down there in South Carolina. Session two, uh, strengthening of background check, procedures to be followed before federal firearms licensee may transfer a firearm to a person who is not such licensee. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff in here, term, term limits, uh, talking about not less than 10 days, not more than 10 days, up to 25 days. This thing is really, really confusing. So let me just go along with this narrative that I pulled off of the NRAs. The current three-day safety valve provision is vital and protects gun owners in numerous ways. The safety valve provision ensures that there is a disruption to the NICS and overwhelming volume of background checks. As of late, you know that there's been a ton of background checks that have been shot in there. This makes the, the uh, FBI, the NICS procedure, that forces them to perform the background checks. With this new thing that's coming on, what it does is it relaxes their urgency to get these things done. Uh, talking about this, FBI carries out its background checks duties in an expedient and responsible manner that recognizes the right to keep and bear arms as a constitutionally protected individual right. What this is going to do, absence of this provision, the FBI would be less incentive to conduct NICS checks in a timely manner. Moreover, the agency would have free reign to indefinitely delay any transfers they deem undesirable. This kind of reminds me of the, you know, when you have to fill out a Form 1 or you get your tax stamp and you have to wait forever in order to get it back. There's no urgency. There's no, uh, we're, not, we're not inhibiting on your Second Amendment rights, which that, again, according to some people, is subject to reasonable legislation. Moreover, the agency would have free reign to indefinitely delay any transfers they deem undesirable for whatever political or purported public policy purpose they could concoct. Now, if anybody has any <laughs> idea that, you know, the FBI is some kind of bipartisan, you know, that they don't pull any punches towards one party or another or somebody wants a firearm in their political alignment, of course not, no. I mean, KB32, gosh, he wants another guy. Oosh, eesh, yeah, this would turn all firearm sales from dealers into something akin of a May issue licensing. Prospective gun buyers who are not prohibited from owning firearms by law could be denied by bureaucratic dictate. <laughs> that's what, uh, oh, all right, I'm not gonna do that, but that's what Opie said to Darla in a sentence, how do I dictate? Uh, through the form of an indefinite delay. So yeah, these are the big bills as of late and are really hot and heavy. And again, they go uh, death by a thousand nicks. And that's no pun on words by nicks, but uh, whatever. But what I'm getting at is that every little thing that they do is a chip away at our Second Amendment rights. So that being it said, let me know what your thoughts are below. Don't forget to do the hashtag, shall not be in French, or shall not in French, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Just show the support for our Second Amendment. This stuff's getting really crazy, and there are individuals out there who don't have a problem with reasonable legislation because they have no skin in the game. There are people out there, and I will find out if our little concealed carry, if that'll be affected at all by this. All right, that's it, guys. 
Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men and women in uniform 24-7 who support our Constitution and our Bill of Rights as it was written by our founding fathers. I'm KB32. Y'all be good. I am out of here. Boom. Oh, yeah. Like, share, subscribe, and all that cool stuff. Y'all be good.